Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 10th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Over the last few years, web browsers implemented a new JavaScript API for WebSockets. Now, WebSockets allow bidirectional communication with web servers and the security impact of WebSockets isn't always well understood. One of the better ways to learn about new features like this and to explore different vulnerabilities and attacks is typically just, well, to experiment, to have some real world code that you can play with. And for WebSockets, we now have damn vulnerable WebSockets. That's a little PHP web applications that demonstrates various vulnerabilities in WebSockets. It's a little bit similar to the damn vulnerable web application that of course does implement more of the traditional vulnerabilities. To run it, you need Apache, PHP, MySQL. So nothing really all that fancy in PHP itself. Of course, you also need support to connect to MySQL via the MySQL I library, which as far as I'm aware, all major Linux distributions installed sort of by default or in Windows, probably something like XAMPP or so will allow you to install all of this very easily. So if you are a developer or a pen tester, take a look at the Git repository and the link you'll find in the show notes. One of the big news stories last year was a vulnerability in defibrillators and pacemakers made by St. Jude Medical. Now, the vulnerability allowed an attacker to remotely manipulate these devices and seriously affect the health or even kill a patient that had one of these devices implanted. Today, St. Jude released a patch for these devices. It should be rolled out automatically. Now, one reason that this particular vulnerability made so many headlines was also that the company that released details about the vulnerability got together with an investment company that took a short position in St. Jude Medical in order to financially gain from this particular discovery. It's actually not clear if they ever were able to make money with uh, this particular scheme. At the time, St. Jude Medical was in the process of being acquired by Abbott Laboratories. And that deal still went through and Abbott Laboratories stock actually rose from $77.82 in August to $80.82 today. In everything I've seen in the past, there has been a fairly weak, if any, correlation between vulnerability releases like this and stock price. Often the stock price actually goes up as the result of a release like this, because in particular for small companies, it sort of draws more attention and interest to the company. Currently, advice that you often hear is that passwords should be longer than 12 characters and the users are being asked to use, for example, passphrases in order to make password cracking more difficult. That advice mostly comes from the fact that at 12 characters and larger, some of the traditional techniques to, for example, brute force hashes like rainbow tables fail because of the size of the rainbow tables that would be required to cover all 12 and more character options. A new blog article on Netmux is now looking into some strategies to crack these very large passwords. Turns out, well, of course it's possible. It does take a little bit more intelligent cracking. So where you're setting up lists of possible passwords that don't cover the entire possible key space. In particular with passphrases, of course, well, uh, they're assembled from regular words. So instead of essentially having a rather finite space of let's say four characters each character can be 26 or 50, 60 different values with uh, passphrases, you now have three or four different words. Of course, the key space is still larger. You typically have a few hundred or maybe thousand uh, different words that could be used, but it's still rather finite and uh, can be cracked. So this blog article goes way beyond that. It looks at a number of different strategies uh, to break predictable large passwords. Best thing you can do, of course, is yes, pick a password that's 12 characters or longer, but pick a random one, which of course forces you then to use some kind of password manager. 
And if you're using VNC, there's a critical update for you, libvnc server. That's the library that implements the VNC protocol. You should update it. There is a heap-based buffer overflow that's being addressed here that could be used to crash the client and possibly also execute arbitrary code. I don't see VNC used as much as I used to in the past. Uh, not clear if this particular vulnerability will be mitigated by running VNC over SSH, but uh, I would expect that SSH will prevent an attacker from exploiting uh, this vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.